Good morning and welcome to our reflection for Monday 15th of March. My name is John and I'm a licensed lay minister here in Morton on Thames. Today we're looking at John's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 40, the story of Jesus healing a blind man and of how people reacted to this. I'll pray and then you might like to pause the video and read the passage. Lord, as we read and study your word today, help us to understand what it might mean in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. The way that this passage starts tells us a lot about how people thought at the time. Even Jesus' closest followers are saying, This man is blind. Is that because he sinned or because his parents did? It's hard now for us to imagine a world in which any form of disability is viewed as being God's judgment for sin. As the parent of a learning disabled child myself, that's something that I'm very grateful for. Jesus himself does not think that way. He's clear that the man's blindness is totally unrelated to sin. It does, though, provide, in this case, an opportunity for a miraculous healing and for God to be glorified. Unfortunately, most of the people involved don't seem to see it that way. First, the man's neighbours need convincing that the man that they see in front of them is even the same person as the one who was blind. Then, the Pharisees cast every possible doubt on it too. Not satisfied with the he the healed man's testimony. They check with his parents to confirm that the man was ever blind. Then they give him the third degree, asking him to repeat his story and trying to catch him out. They know that it must be a miraculous healing, but they can't accept that Jesus did it. Because the Messiah was supposed to be from Bethlehem. But this chap Jesus is from Galilee because this healing happened on the Sabbath day, and God would never do that. It's against the rules. They even say that Jesus must be a sinner. This drives the healed man to tell them that they're talking nonsense, for if healing comes from God, how can it be carried out by a sinner? For daring to speak the obvious truth, the healed man is thrown out of the synagogue. But Jesus reassures the healed man. He quietly identifies himself as the Son of Man, the Christ, and the man believes straight away. To me, Jesus' next words are the core of the passage in verse 39. For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and that those who see will become blind. Whilst the one who was blind sees, the ones who think they can see are in fact the ones who are blinding themselves to the truth. When Jesus says these words, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind, he is speaking to the Pharisees too. He is reminding them of the words of the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, chapter 5, verse 21, Hear this, you foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. And God says to Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 9, Go and tell these people, Be ever hearing but never understanding, Be ever seeing but never perceiving. This in turn gives rise to two proverbs that are familiar to us today. Firstly, there are none so blind as those who will not see. Those who are given all of the evidence but refuse to accept it. That sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? And secondly, they can't see the wood for the trees. Someone who is so absorbed in the precise detail that they can't see the big picture. 
Because the evidence doesn't fit into their prearranged boxes, it isn't evidence. These are maybe things that we can relate to today, in our own faith journeys. There are things that we can get tied up in, details of exactly what happened when and in what order, questions about the precise meaning of words that Jesus, St Paul and others used. Although the words we read now have been translated at least three times and considerably revised over the years as use of language changes. In fixating on the detail, we can miss out on the core message. On our front line, in failing to step back from a situation and look at it from a different perspective, we can come to the wrong decision. In our relationships, if we start cataloguing all a person's failings, we can forget that we love them. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you are not a Lord who condemns, but a Lord who forgives. Thank you, Lord, that you are a Lord who takes away our blindness and helps us to see. Help us today to look at the world through your eyes, to listen to the world with your ears, not just to see, but to perceive, not just to hear, but to understand. Amen. I hope you will have a good and rewarding day today.